Merry Christmas to all. As a girl, if your boss gives you a job that you are completely underqualified for and it involves a known man whore, you might want to reconsider why you're really there. How else am I supposed to become a real journalist? It's gonna be brilliant, I tell you. Pure schmaltz. Not our brand. So this chick Amber gets her big break at work because out of everybody in the office, she's the one that the Prince of Aldovia is most likely to bang. You're a writer. Yes. No, no, but I studied it. But when her boss offers her a gig writing a story, she's like, why? You have an absolutely breathtaking hiney. I mean, that thing is good. Well, she's told that everybody else is on more important articles. Get a load of my next piece. Ugly Christmas sweaters of the stars. But it's really because... I have breasts. Exquisite breasts. So the king of this country, Aldovia, died last year, and no one knows if Prince Richard is going to take the throne, because he's out banging models and whatnot. Everybody needs a hobby. But they're also acting like no one knows where this dude is, even though they've been taking pictures of him. And know that he'll be back in his country on the 18th for a press conference. His royal hotness is due back this weekend. Amber's upset with this assignment, because it would mean that her father would be home alone for Christmas, and she's the only girl in the world that isn't into guys over six feet tall that make over six figures. Honey, he's everyone's type. Is he really? Let me think. Yes! yes. Yeah, you should definitely believe everything you read on the internet. So she might give up her big break because she has to cover a press conference a week before Christmas? Yeah, he could just come back and say, I've decided to become king after a year of collecting STDs like Pokemon. And then she could just turn around and go back home. But her dad has to tell her that she's throwing away her future to eat corn dogs with him. Okay, you win. So she goes, Tits McGee is on vacation. And gets upset when some homeless looking guy steals her cab, even though there's a shuttle for all the press. But the prince doesn't show up, and all these reporters are pissed that the guy that they've all reported was MIA is missing. That's pretty juicy stuff. But this dude assures them that he'll be crowned at the Christmas Eve ball. So since her job is to report on what happens if he turns down the crown, and she won't know that for six more days, she thinks that her boss will be mad that she didn't get the story today, and breaks into the castle. I am a fierce warrior. And not only does she just walk in, she's slamming doors behind her too. She ends up getting caught, and pretends to be Princess Emily's new tutor. And this dude's like, Okay. The human element of human resources is our biggest point of vulnerability. We should start phasing it out immediately. But he doesn't think it's weird that she's not supposed to be there until after New Year's or that she's wearing a press pass. And he just lets this chick, Mrs. Avril, take her to see the queen. You're the head of security. I, I don't feel good about it either. Oh, she knew that the tutor wasn't going to be there. She must have done a lot of research and had all of her information ready to fool him. No. No, she didn't. I am a damn good journalist. Even if she did, you'd think that the royal guards would have a complete background write-up on the tutor, including a photo, but no. This dude's like, are you Martha? And Amber's like, yep, that's me. And he's like, okay, let's have you go meet the queen. And when she does, the queen's with the guy that stole her cab that she didn't need, who happens to be the prince. And she's like, yep, definitely looks like he has all the STDs. That's exactly what you're gonna find out. Gross. Well, it's probably not as bad as you think. So not one of these professional journalists recognized the guy that they came to cover? You do look like a derelict. Then the princess comes in, and she almost blows her cover introducing herself. I'm I am I am Martha. Why did you say that name? And then breaks some priceless shit that doesn't get her fired. Put it on my tab. The next day, we see that pretending to be a tutor might be hard since she's kind of an idiot. There's lots of numbers and equation-y thingies. Yeah, it's math. But she ignores doing her fake job to go talk to Prince Richard. When he turns around from shooting his bow, Amber's surprised by him being handsome without the beard, even though she's already seen pictures of him without it. So, big deal, he has a good face. And now she doesn't care how many STDs he has. It's really not that many. He shows her how to shoot, and she breaks a window and shoots a painting because they were making googly eyes at each other. You know, some, some people have actually called me the world's greatest archer. Are you one of those people? They weren't paying attention while shooting a deadly weapon? Shut up. They were distracted by each other's hotness, which should have her wondering if that was the real reason she was given this assignment. First time covering the Royals. First time covering anything. Because there are only like four other chick reporters, and he's sure as hell not going to try to bang any of them. Can you do this, Amber? Of course you will. Don't even bother denying it. But she's probably just relieved that she aimed up instead of down. Otherwise, she might have hit Emily, and the queen might not have been as forgiving on that one. It's not the end of the world. 
Emily then invites her to go to a cocktail party where she finds out that the prince's cousin Simon would get the throne if Richard abdicates. Uh, you shall address me as Lord Duxbury. Well, why wouldn't Emily get it? Male bloodline. Well, she wants it, but no. Traditionally, the crown was passed down the male bloodline, and even today, there's still a bunch of people that don't want women to rule because they're afraid one day another leader will say something mean when they're on their period, and they'll end up launching some nukes. They're led by a woman. What does a woman know? So she gives an update to her friends at work, and they insist that she keeps digging for dirt on the prince. But she spies on him playing the piano, and then they bond over having dead parents. A common interest is very fertile ground for bonding. But then she asks whether he's going to give up the crown to be an international playboy. And he's like, do you really believe what every article ever written about me says? And he takes off. That's what it said on the news, and the news never lies. Later that night, the royal family all get together to decorate the tree, and the queen found an acorn ornament that the king made, but hid in a secret place that she came across when she was going through a shit after he died. The queen also invited Richard's ex, Lady Sophia, over. And she cockblocks Richard by being a lazy piece of shit. Would you put it on the tree? And Amber gets upset that he helps Lady Lazy Ass. Can you believe that guy? But the next day, she finds out that Emily found out who she really is after going through her laptop while Amber was taking a shit. Your password is password? She promises not to tell as long as she writes an article that shows her brother for who he really is. Because all the magazines make him look like a Kardashian. Parasites, a lot of them. And of course, who would know more about a rich bachelor's sexual exploits than his 10-year-old sister? I'll keep your secret. But Amber thinks, wow, you're right. He hasn't tried to fuck me once. He probably only dates promiscuous women. No, models. But the princess would have found out anyway, since another reporter recognizes her with Emily the next day. But since Emily does know, she tells him that she'll throw him in the dungeon if he doesn't fuck off and keep his mouth shut. But the prince, who is backstage, ready to be introduced to give a speech about the benefit to raise money for orphans, left to go build a snowman with the orphans, so now the press still think he's missing and doesn't care about kids. Talk about a real jerk around. Why are there so many dead parents in this story? Well, one writer does sappy holiday crap, and the other does mostly horror and murder mysteries. So they probably didn't agree on everything, and needed a compromise on the plot, and finally agreed, Everybody's got dead people! The next day, Amber takes Emily sledding, and after dragging her ass all the way to the top of this hill, the princess is like, I don't know about this. You little- But she goes, and they get found by Richard, who's out riding his horse. They end up having a snowball fight, which of course, means that they're in love now. You are so smitten. Then Simon and Sophia see him and decide that Amber's up to something because the prince likes her. But she is up to something. Well, I mean, she lied about her name, but the article is only supposed to be about whether he'll become king or not. Not our brand. Which is really off brand for their magazine because she should be covering who they're banging or what they're wearing. Why would he be dressed like a nutcracker? And now that Emily got involved, it's going to say that he likes orphans and that he might only have herpes. And there is no cure. Not really a dungeon worthy crime. Seriously, you guys have a dungeon? No. But when they get back, the queen's pissed that they left the grounds without her permission. Mother doesn't let me do anything but study and go to the loo. So the next day, when Richard goes out riding again, Amber steals a fucking horse and follows him. I will stalk his ass. Somehow, she loses his tracks in the snow, and when they get in the woods, the horse gets spooked, throws her off, and leaves her ass. So being the genius that she is, she doesn't follow the tracks back to the castle and goes deeper into the woods, where she runs into a wolf. I know it sounds harsh, but God does not want her to live. And what does she do? She just sits next to a tree, ready to die. But luckily, Richard shows up and scares it away. Selfish jerk at your service. He takes her to his hunting mansion for warmth, where he tells her that he knew that she was following him, but apparently didn't want to spend time with her. What? Do you think you're special? But when he got to the hunting mansion, he saw her stolen horse that knew where he was going somehow, but not her. So he followed the horse's trail back to her. While they warm up, he tells her that he and Sophia broke up because she sold their story to a tabloid, and he doesn't want that to happen again. Well, he's really not going to be happy when he finds out about her. Right. But the stupid thing is, is that he doesn't want to be king because of it. But him fleeing the country and missing his dad's funeral made the news for a year. So at this point, he might as well just take the job. I mean, they've already called him every name in the book. Selfish jerk! Is that what you think I am? Wait, he didn't even come back for his father's funeral? Oh, you don't know the half of it. Not only did he flee the country after telling his dad, he was leaving the people he was raised to be responsible for in the hands of his soulless cousin. And the fact that his dad died days later probably means that the stress killed him. And then he didn't even bother to come back to console his mom and sister. All because he didn't want to have to answer reporters' questions. No call. No text, no nothing. 
Just gone. But they've got a fire going and they're drinking, so he breaks out some of the king's poetry. And he reads her the last one he wrote before he died. There once was a man from Nantucket. It's beautiful. But right before they bang, the horses are making noise, so he goes out to check on them. And as soon as the door shuts, she starts going through the king's shit. And when something drops, she finds a hidden compartment with a hidden document. Clearly somebody's trying to hide something. I get her being really good at sneaking around, but it's just mean to pretend to like him. Well, it is my job. Well, one, she's not good at snooping. The king's desk was from like Walmart or something, and it had the most obvious hidden compartment ever. And the only reason that she found it is because she's clumsy as shit. She's always destroying something or falling down. It's no wonder she never wears heels. She'd probably end up killing somebody. Fascinating choice of shoes. But two, she does like him. She just has no problem lying, manipulating, and it seems like banging him to get ahead at work. But it's very important to me that I be viewed as a professional. And since she thinks she found something, she must have convinced him to go back to the castle instead of banging him. That's called stealing, you know. And I have no idea how she hid this boulder, since his arms were wrapped around her while they stupidly rode the same horse. There is nothing loose about this goose. She waits to read it until she gets back to her room, only to find out that the prince isn't the king's biological son. Slut. Leave the mothers out of this, all right? The prince was adopted, and therefore not the rightful heir to the throne. So he's a double orphan? Well, I mean, his adopted mom is still alive, and I don't think you can call a 27-year-old man an orphan anymore. It's totally unfair. So her friends back home tell her to leak the story because he doesn't want to be king anyway, and will probably see it as an out. But she's like, guys, he's got feelings and stuff. So she tries to talk to Richard, but he's with Sophia, who's trying to get him back with reason, and he's like, I have feelings and stuff. So she kisses him right as Amber walks in. You would think he's like cheating on her or something. But Richard's like, you don't like me, you just want to be queen. And she's like, fuck yeah I do. So he leaves. That went well? After Amber's dad tells her to just listen to her heart on what to do, the prince asks her to go for a walk, and she just leaves all the state secret documents out in the open when she knows there are two sneaky bastards who want the throne. Scum of the earth. And those aforementioned bastards sneak in while they're out and find the papers with no effort at all. That's amazing. She's a bleeding Sherlock Holmes. They also know her real name now, all of which she was about to tell Richard, but he decided to kiss her, and she doesn't want to ruin the moment. You have a massive erection. You could tell him where to put it. I'm good. I'm not a big no. fan of meat jelly. So now it's the night of the ball, where he's going to accept the crown. His mother tells him that she remembers her husband's coronation. Dance with me, you little toad. Which was also at the Christmas Eve ball, which brings up the question on whether the new king has to be crowned on Christmas or if they have a year to crown a new one. They have this interregnum thing. In Aldovia, it's a maximum of a year. Your math is blowing my mind. If he died on Christmas Day, it could be both. But then he would have had enough time to give the queen her acorn and the poem. But anyway, after a makeover, Amber gets to do that look how hot I am at the top of the stairs thing, and she's nice enough to wait until everyone sees her before she starts down the stairs. Did the queen invite one of the chambermaids? They go into the ceremony, where apparently coronations are run just like weddings. I ask that if anybody here knows any reason they may not be married, speak now or forever stay silent. Although I'm not even sure if wedding ceremonies do this part anymore. But Sophia presents the adoption papers and outs Amber as a journalist at the same time. You bitch! So Richard fucks off after finding out he's adopted and in love with somebody whose name he doesn't know. So everything we've been through together has been a lie. No, not everything, just the little things. But that's what happens when you interrupt people when they say your name, followed by I need to tell you something. If anything, it's kind of your fault. What did I, you just say? I, I take that back. So he's pissed. Yeah, we are through! Because of your actions, you scorpion woman! And she's understandably kicked out of the castle, but after they let her shower and change. We're not savages. The next day, the queen wants to know if he'll be leaving now that he knows he's not really her son. And he's like, um, and stop being rich? Hell no. And I'm still gonna try to be king too. Got some acorns on you, kid. But he didn't want to be king. Yeah, he even went to his father's grave and was like, fine, I'll be king. But I just want your corpse to know that I'm not happy about it. But now that he has the perfect doubt, he's like, if you tell me I can't have it, that's all I want, and I will stop at nothing to get it. I won't let him win. Simon gets married to Sophia in a private ceremony that really isn't on brand for either one of them. You love the spotlight, and you love the attention. But maybe they just didn't want the queen there to write the vows. I will take you places where you've never been. I will show you things that you have never seen. And I will see the life run out of you. 
thought it might be a nice surprise. No, it's perfectly normal. And they demand for all the king's council and the queen to leave their families on Christmas to crown him. And somehow, everyone shows up, including Richard and the queen, who demand that they delay the ceremony. I demand this process be delayed. But the law says that they have to do it today. The law also says that the queen has to preside over the ceremony, so if she would have just stayed home, they could have postponed this thing as long as they wanted. We might not have thought this through. So now, his royal douchiness is about to be crowned. Did we just lose? Don't you have like a plan B or something? Luckily, Amber called her dad, and something he says makes her remember the poem that she just happened to write down from memory. English is my best subject. And she figures out that the riddle hinted that there was something in the acorn. And had the queen read the poem at any time, she would have figured it out, since it's pretty obvious. But from a seed, an acorn's gift, the truth will flood. Especially when you know that the king likes hidden compartments and your kid is adopted. No kidding. So after storming the castle, she convinces Mrs. Avril to let her look at the acorn, where they find a law saying that you don't have to be blood to be king anymore. Does it say anything about having girls do it too? No, why would it say that? Because his son left the country after telling him he didn't want to be king, and he knows the next in line is a douchebag. If he thought that there was even a small chance that he wouldn't take the throne, why wouldn't he make sure that his only other child got to rule? It's about legacy. Shut up. Amber has to marry the king, or else the story is just stupid, okay? No way. Yes way. So they go through the ceremony, and even though everyone, including the prime minister, groan at the idea of Simon being king, no one speaks up at the part where they ask for objections. Have the courage to say something, hello! Now see, the one thing about royal bloodlines is that they're supposed to be hand-selected by God. So when the king was able to get his sterile wife pregnant at like 80, they should have realized that Emily was a miracle baby and immediately thought that she should be the heir. Fate wills it so. Emily was a miracle. Her blood should have more power than his penis. Oh, at least I've got one. But right as he's about to get the crown, Amber comes in with the law, signed and sealed by the king. And save his butt, just like you always do. And you'd think that the king would have wanted at least one member of the council to have a copy of this in case, I don't know, no one found the acorn that was in a hiding place. Oh, your father had put it in a secret hiding place. Or no one ever found the poem. I assume he was going to give it to her with the ornament that he made the acorn. Or if they did, weren't smart enough to figure it out. It's some sort of riddle. But the prime minister reads it and says it's legit and everyone claps. So they crown Richard, and when he turns to the crowd, Amber's gone. It was as if she had never been here. She goes home and quits her job because her boss won't print her article. It says that she should have been the one to leak the adoption story. Always the rebel. She plans on starting a blog about Richard to help clear his name in the tabloids. And I'm sure that'll pay her New York City rent. But didn't he want everybody to stop writing about him? Why would she care what he wants now? No one in this story cares about what anyone else wants. Sophia doesn't care that Richard wants their relationship to be private, while Richard doesn't care that Sophia wants good publicity. The king and queen don't care that Richard wants to turn down the crown, to the point that they make a new law to make sure he inherits the thing he doesn't want. None of them care that Emily wants to be treated equally by being allowed to be in the line of secession, which he could have easily done. Richard doesn't care that he abandoned his family when they needed him the most. The queen doesn't care that her daughter wants to have fun and even admits that she hasn't smiled in a year. Emily doesn't care that she's allowing a reporter to spy on her family because she's nice to her. And Amber doesn't care that she's using a child and might mess up her relationship with her family. She also keeps Richard's adoption secret when she knows that he would use it as an out. And no one cares who the people want to be the ruler. No one even mentions what would be best for them at any point in the story. I mean, they could have just asked, hey, who do you guys want? And they might have said, the Emily, Emily, Emily. I mean, it's implied that Simon's a douche and would be bad for the job, but he hasn't done or said anything that would make him look like a bad king. I really don't care. We also see that not giving a shit about what people want isn't strictly an Aldovian thing, because her friends don't care that she doesn't want to go on a date with this guy, especially after she just got done serving tables and probably still smells like chili dogs. She doesn't care that this random guy is now a fifth wheel on their double date. You often take the help for romantic walks in the snow. But it's a good thing that she doesn't, because Richard shows up at her dad's diner. Probably would have been easier for him to just go to the airport while she was waiting on a flight. Isn't that too easy? He all sticks to the classics, right? But he proposes, and she's like... Not gonna happen. Ouch! But he proposes, and she's like... But my, my whole life is in New York! Even though she just quit her fucking job. But she actually says, we don't know each other well enough to do this. But he says that he really wants to, and she's like... Okay. 
Let's do it. What exactly is the prince thinking? So now she's really going to find out if he has STDs or not. Where there's a tiara, there's dirt. Trust me. Here's something else to celebrate. Your article just broke 20,000 likes. Hey, 20,000? We're lucky if we get 20. Hit the button. And while you're at it, would you hit the subscribe button? You haven't thought about this. We barely know each other. You gotta take a chance. I really wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. I think you're giving me more credit than I deserve. Go on, get away! Get out of here! Let, let's go. Yeah.